Okay, first things first. I didn't include this in your instructions, so I'm really, really sorry. You do need to use stovetop because we're scalding milk. Um, that does not mean getting milk and yelling at it. That means we're throwing it on a stovetop. We're gonna grab a pot, small pot, and we're gonna need half a cup of milk. We're gonna get two tablespoons of butter. We're just gonna have this prepped, okay? You're not putting this in there, you're just setting it to the side. We are living our best lives. Now, this is the weirdest measurement ever, and it's because I, I halved this recipe, because otherwise you would end up with a massive king's cake and we always have too much stuff. This is how I like to do yeast. Grab a tall glass. If you only have a bowl, that's fine, but make sure it's microwave safe, okay? Let's get a fourth cup of water. We're just gonna put that in there. And then it's a tablespoon and a teaspoon. Okay, I should really bring the cup over, but I guess I wanted to challenge myself. And a teaspoon. Okay, we're gonna put this in the microwave for two minutes. My glass is too tall for the microwave. This is very embarrassing. We've got really hot water here. We're gonna add two tablespoons of sugar, white sugar, okay, to our hot water. What that'll do is the hot water is gonna melt our sugar, which is Pipo Pogus. We do need to get this to a temperature that is good for the yeast. So we're just gonna let it come down to a temperature that's just warm. Right now, mine is really hot. But while that sits there, we are gonna measure out the rest of our stuff. Okay, get your mixing bowl, the bowl you're gonna use for mixing. If you're trying to use a hand mixer here, but you don't have a bread hook, you cannot use a hand mixer. So if you don't have a bread hook, you can't use a mixer. We're gonna use our hands. I'm gonna use my hands today. Two and three fourths cups of flour. So if you're not baking along today and you wanna bake along next time, join Join the discord and we're checking on our hot water again. Mine's perfect now. It should not burn you. It should be warm. It should be like the temperature of pee. Hot cocoa that you can drink easily, but it's still hot. We're gonna add our yeast to this now. And you have a short time frame because if that water gets too low, too cold, then it, it's not gonna work. So you're gonna add your yeast in here. Now, be careful with yeasty hands. You can actually get yeast infections if you like work with yeast and then like go to the bathroom and like Wipe your hoo-ha. Okay, so you just stir it in, and we're gonna let it do its thing. So now we set it to the side. The reason I use a cup is because it's gonna be clear when it starts rising. It's easier to tell than a bowl. So we're just gonna let this chill for a little bit, and soon the foam is gonna start, it'll kind of like foam up this way. So that's why I prefer using a cup, because it's easier to tell. So the yeast is gonna chill over here. It's got its sugar, it's got its water, it's living its best life. Let's do our milk. So you're gonna grab your milk, you have half a cup of milk in a pot. What we're gonna do, we're gonna put this pot on high heat. As soon as it comes to a boil, we take it off. That's called scalding the milk. You don't get yeast infections from active dry or instant yeast. Oh, it's because we used live yeast. That makes more sense. What I said might have been a lie. So mine started boiling, I've scalded my milk, and then you add your two tablespoons of butter. And we're just gonna swirl that around until it gets nice and melted. Butter is melting in here. I'm gonna leave this to the side. And do you see my foam? Yeah, yeast latte. If you smell this, it smells like beer. Back over to our milk. We're gonna add a half teaspoon of salt into our milk. It's a teaspoon, I lied. It's a teaspoon. I lied, it's a teaspoon. And then half a teaspoon of nutmeg. It should be just warm now, not like too hot. We're gonna add one egg. Just one egg. Make sure your milk isn't too hot that it scrambles your egg. And then we're gonna add two more tablespoons of sugar in here. Cutie, can you give me gram measurements as well, please? No. Your yeast should have like almost doubled by now. If yours has not, then you, your yeast might be dead and you need to start this over. We're pouring our milk mixture in here and our yeast mixture. All right, now start mixing. You're gonna have to switch to hand mixing in a little bit. We're not making a full-size king's cake because a full-size king's cake feeds like 20 people. And you guys keep telling me that it's like, we keep making too big of things. So we are making kind of a mini one. That looks good, but now I have to start hand kneading it. If you don't have anything to put on your counter, sprinkle some flour on it, that'll be fine. And we're just gonna dump this out right here because we're gonna start working this with your hands. So actually make sure your hands are washed and save this bowl because we're gonna use this to rise. So it looks pretty small and that's because it is. We're making like a six inch round king's cake. Usually these king's cakes are like 10 inches. If you're lazy, can you use a hand mixer? Yes, you can, but it has to have a bread hook. But now, we're just kneading this. We're gonna knead this for like 10 minutes, honestly. For people who don't know how kneading works, it's really just mushing and pulling back. Mushing, pulling back, okay? You're really just going for something like, you hear that? Now it's slappable, before it was too dry. Literally, I can tell how good it is based on the slap. <laughs> Do we want it sticky? It should not stick to your finger, no, see? I have no stickiness. Mine is done, I'll show you how. 
I've got this ball waiting for it to focus. I go like this with my knuckle, and then that bounces back like a tempur bed. Do you see that? If it stays in there, you're not done. Now, get your bowl, and you're just gonna put it back in there, okay? That's a good slap. I'm gonna get some paper towels. I'm gonna get them wet. I'm gonna squeeze out any excess moisture. Damp paper towel, make sure it's warm water. Okay, so now we're gonna put this in a warm place but we, it, this needs two hours now. But make sure you wanna cover that top because it will dry out, so that's why I said the wet paper towel or even, even a dishcloth would be fine. Your dough looks good. Stop touching that bitch. That bitch has gotta start rising. Roll it into a ball and you're chilling. Blinded is back, his kitchen setup is better than ever. What are you doing to that dough? I killed my yeast the first time, chef, uh, but you know, it's okay. Drying man, ooh, your dough looks great. Start with two uh, teaspoons warm water and you might have to add two more. Sometimes what I'll even do is like, if I don't have a warm spot, which I might do today, cause our house is pretty cold. You put your oven on like a low temperature, so like 200, and then you just set your, your bowl kind of next to the oven or on top of it or something like that. Look at that dough, it looks, look at your outfits. What the, I like how I noticed the dough before the outfits. You guys look great. I got my, I got my dough. I think it looks pretty sick. Oh yeah, your dough's uh, great. You have two hours now. You have two hours. Everyone has two hours, so we're just chilling for a while. Just so you guys know. Mech D, let me see yours. He dabbed. Oh my god. Nice, thick, voluptuous. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Uh, I poked it and it was really spongy. It bounced right back at me. I'm gonna have you add a full tablespoon of warm water. Mix that in, should be good. Worst case, you might just have a drier bread and that's fine because it's covered in frosting, so it's like whatever. What are you doing, sis? Now, essentially, we make this, this is kind of just a big cinnamon roll. Um, it's gonna have to rise again, but we're gonna prep some stuff, okay? Preheat the oven now to 375, chat, 375. Now, find your pan that you're gonna be cooking with. You're gonna wanna line this pan or use a parchment paper. I got this really, really shitty parchment paper from Sprouts, and I super regret it. It's like so bad. Like literally, this is how it comes out of the box. Have your pan ready. My dough has doubled in size. This is what my dough looks like. All right, we're gonna pull this out. Ooh, it's nice and warm and oh, it's good fluffy dough. Now we're going to roll it. You need a rolling pin. If you don't have a rolling pin, you can use a wine bottle, a glass, whatever you got, a jar. But you're trying to make a rectangle so you can start rolling it out. Maybe like 14 inches, but like, I don't know. That's where I'm at. All right, now we have to make our filling. We're going to get four tablespoons butter and we're just gonna melt this. I have my four tablespoons of melted butter. I'm gonna put half a cup of brown sugar into that and then two tablespoons of cinnamon. So your filling looks like this, just goo. It's okay if your dough is still on the um, counter or whatever you're using to roll it out on right now. We're gonna move it in a little bit. Okay, leave a little on the edges. You don't wanna get all the way to the edges or it won't stick to each other. Try to get this evenly spread. Now, chat, now we start to roll. We're rolling it hot dog. So you're making a really long hot dog. So you have this long thing. Get your parchment paper or your aluminum or your, your pan, whatever it's gonna be, okay? When you put the baby in, when we pull it out. Because there's mixed reviews on Amazon saying if the baby would melt or not. You want to turn this into a circle. And we're just gonna pinch, try to insert, you know, kind of like you're docking. I don't think there's any other baker out there that's used docking. Insert one uncircumcised penis into the other uncircumcised penis and pull the skin over. Got it? Really pinch these together. The air will break apart and you will be sad. Beautiful, and that's what you're going for. So now we're going to cut it. So everyone needs to find clean scissors. You're gonna cut like a third of a way in. Just kind of snap, snip every like thumb apart. Yeah, you're literally gonna put your scissors like a third in. And what this does is it creates really pretty layers once this starts rising, okay? I'll give you a close up. Damp paper towel. And I will say, let this rise on top of your oven 45 minutes. Or next to it if your oven gets really hot, but it's gonna help the warmth if your house is cold. Oh, hell yeah, Jay. Put your seam on the, don't cut yet, stop, stop. You're okay, flip it over. The seam on the bottom. is spreading. Yep, you're ready. You're ready to start rolling. Blinded, you gave up. Rip, bread did not rise. Javis is rolling out. Ricky just made his filling, perfect. 
Okay, now dock it. My seam is on the top, is that okay? No, your seam needs to be on the bottom. Oh my God, yours got, they look, this looks perfect. I put the seam on the wrong side, it's gonna be too late. I'm assuming it's just gonna like crunch up in the middle. Yeah. yeah, yours will just be a little ugly, but that's okay, no one's mad at ugly. I'm doing my transfer right now, I just had to connect them. Dock. It's pretty thick. It's called docking. It's... He's scissoring that up. Hell yeah, docking right, and scissoring. What the fuck happened to yours? Okay, listen, all you need to do, you need to just get your, just turn it into a circle. Just glue it together. We're starting the docking process. <laughs> I'm going to be real. <laughs> it doesn't it's seem too like... thick, dude. It's too girthy and thick. We're starting like... the docking process. We've given it 45 minutes. Let's see if it's risen enough. Look at him. He's going in the oven for 30 minutes. Woo! It's beautiful. Oh my God, it's perfect. Wah, wah, wee, wah. It is out of this world. Okay, so this needs to cool before we can frost it. So this is the quickest way to get it to cool. Take it off its hot pan, put it on a different plate or something like that. We're, this really has to cool, otherwise our frosting will just melt off. I could have gone a little wider on my cuts because it's nice when they kind of like open up more, but it's still good. It looks like a cool monster, admittedly. Oh, yours looks great. So the goal is this ring in the middle. Amdadouli's is currently better than mine. You got a very pretty texture, bring that close. Oh, heck yeah, yours is gorgeous. How fun is that? Ricky's look good, Ricky's look good. This one was e rolled out more, a little more even, that's why they're the two different shapes. That looks like a vagina, I'll be honest. That kind of looks like a vagina. Okay. <laughs> it looks good though, it looks good. I'm sure it smells good, it's gonna be great. Oh, so good. I See, my, my hole closed up. My cussy too tight. Yours is a monster. Oh my God, wait, Mechdies is perfect? Oh, the drippage. It will taste good. It'll taste good. It's gonna taste good. Bless, yeah, bless your hearts. It was, it's good. I, I, it's good. Oh, it smells damn good. Yeah, it's actually tragic, Is huh? it killing you? Yeah, it's killing me. Does chat know? Yeah, dry man, yours looks perfect. That actually looks great, good job. Before we frost anything, if you have a baby that you're putting in the cake, now is your time to put it in the cake. So what you'll do is choose a random area of the cake, cut a slit in it and shove the baby up there, okay? The reason you put a baby in the cake, uh, the tradition with Mardi Gras and King's cake. What the heck? Yeah, you put a little toy baby in it. Oh. Is whoever gets the slice with the baby is in charge of the party next year or they're in charge of the King's cake next year. So you need one and a fourth cup of powdered sugar. And listen, guys, anyone who did this bake along this was five hours of your day baking. This is not a normal bake along. Give yourself a fucking pat on the back. Two tablespoons of milk. Again, this is more of a glaze. And then you're gonna have half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. And we're just gonna stir that together. Here we go. This is a glaze, you see it? So we've gotta glaze this bad boy. So I'm just gonna kind of start in the middle. And it's gonna start dripping down. You know, kind of encourage it. It, you don't want your cake to be too hot. If your cake is too hot, this will just melt all off. If yours is doing what mine did, where it completely all melted off, we're just gonna try to salvage it the best we can. It should stay on there more. Listen, sometimes I mess up, okay? If yours is too thin, add some powdered sugar to it. If yours is too thick, add a little bit more milk. Yeah, I think you only need a tablespoon of milk. So, here you go. This is better, yeah. Okay, so you really just want to get like a nice coverage around the top. Now, something that makes King's Cakes, King's Cakes, yellow, green, and purple sprinkles. Then we go yellow. Kind of do these like pie wedges, purple. Okay, if you, I'm making a mess because you should put this over a, a pan so all your sprinkles, you don't have to clean them. And it's so pretty. We've made a King's Cake. And that's a King's Cake chat. I think, I think people maybe just need a, a little bit more time. No sprinkles for me, so happy it's done. Okay, hell yeah. Ooh, pink. So the reason for the, these sprinkles in specific is because of Mardi Gras. They're the Mardi Gras colors, so that's why, so you don't have to do sprinkles. Ooh, that looks yum, that looks like Christmas. Honestly, we should make this for Christmas. It looks like a come tribute to King's Cake. You killed it. Yours looks good. You know what? You recovered well. I'll say it. It's so much purple, but I bet it tastes amazing. Cute. Hell yeah. Lemon bars and this. You've had a productive day. 
Okay. Listen, now you can make that face all day, but it tastes incredible. I believe it. I'm not trying to make. I'm trying to see it. I'm sorry. I'm trying to. It's a good face. Look how fucking perfect it is. It is. It is really good. Ricky. Oh my God, Ricky, that's beautiful. Yeah, that's literally. You Google King's cake, and that's what it looks like. These do look like a lot of tributes, don't they? She's a little quirky. She is a little quirky. We love her though. Rashi, that looks so good. Shenanigans, that looks great. My grandma didn't want icing, so we compromised. Oh, that's funny. Cutie, how do we store this? Once it, once your glaze like hardens, you can just wrap it in saran wrap. Now everyone needs to ship it to Myth. Yes, we did. 